ada, Bandung ada, Jakarta ada, eh, bahkan Medan. yang di Irian Jaya juga ada. Mana ya? Um, dan oke. Okay. Kupang, Kupang, Undana. Oke, okay, dan kita hari ini akan belajar bareng tentang course training, uh, course strength training for low back pain. Jadi latihan untuk otot-otot inti untuk mengurangi nyeri punggung bagian bawah. Dan seperti kita ketahui bahwa di dunia saat ini, di general population itu, ada 30 persen yang dari atlet, yang kalau general population itu 80 sampai 90 persen terjadi nyeri punggung bawah. Dan ada laporan bahwa atlet itu mengalami low back pain 1 sampai 30 persen pada atlet. Dan faktor resiko ini biasanya pada olahraga heavy lifting, jadi apa namanya, angkat berat, lifting, terus pulling, terus ada rotational movement, dan merokok itu juga merupakan sebagai faktor untuk timbulnya low back pain. Dan orang yang kegemukan, nah sekarang ini kan banyak ya, lagi kita lagi disuruh rebahan di rumah. Kalau sudah rebahan, work from home, kadang orang lupa melakukan aktivitas olahraga. Dan aktivitas ini biasanya jadi berkurang. Banyak makan, tapi kurang aktivitas akhirnya yang ditimbun kebanyakan jadi lemak. Akhirnya jadi kegemukan. Nah, faktor-faktor itu yang akhirnya bisa menyebabkan terjadinya nyeri punggung bawah. Dan pada olahraga, for sport, injury in low back pain, itu ada 54% di wrestler, jadi di apa namanya, gulat, terus 32% pada tennis player, di football ada 37 persen, dan yang paling banyak itu pada olahraga senam, sebanyak 79 persen. Dan di golfers, di golf itu 33, di skiers, yang olahraga ski sama dayung itu juga banyak, sebanyak 65 persen dan 63 persen. Nah, bagaimana sih nanti untuk memanajemen, untuk meningkatkan kekuatan dari otot-otot inti tersebut, khususnya di bagian punggung, perut, pinggang, daerah-daerah yang di bagian bawah itu agar dia kuat sehingga dia tidak bisa apa mengurangi untuk injuri. Nah, itu nanti akan dipresentasikan oleh Dr. Lim Boho. Oke. Okay. Uh, welcome Dr. Lim Boho. I'm sorry I'm talking in Indonesia. No so problem. I try to introduce about the low back pain. I can understand. Oh yeah, I know because you are Malayu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now I will introduce you to Dr. Lim Boho. Uh, he is a associate professor in the University of Malaya in the Center of Sport and Exercise Science. Jadi di, di khusus untuk ilmu keragaannya. And then they focus on the injury prevention also, right? Yeah, yeah, practical session. Yeah. They have a program how to reduce injury, also how to make uh, Core strength. Yeah. Core strength. Yeah. So, 
and he's very warmly, very kindness, and you can ask anything to him, and he's like my family. <laughs> I, I like to find my brother or oh my uncle <laughs> like ah. that. And so welcome, Dr. Limboho. And you can use English or also Malayu if sometimes you cannot find to make easy understand to them. Uh, uh, maybe, um, first of all, I would like to say thank you uh, to the organizer, Dr. Titin. So people address you Dr. Titin or any other names? Never <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. Huh? Dr. Titin, I think it's much easier to, to say that. So uh, hopefully other people don't, uh, uh, what I mean is uh, don't present anything. So I think I straight away start, uh, so hopefully everybody will, I, I talk a little bit slow in English all the way so that uh, hopefully you can understand so that uh, you just ask questions, uh, jot down any question if you want to ask and then you can ask it after them. Yeah? So that I start my presentation so that uh, you just look at the, I think the video I embedded there, maybe you can only visual, but you cannot hear the audio because I tried that before. Uh, so that, uh, so just bear in mind with that. Lah, yeah. All right, I start the presentation. Yeah. Okay, now your times. Hmm. Okay. Okay, can everyone see this uh, slide? Can everyone see the slide? Yeah. 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 Ah, okay. You you can see that uh, actually there's an advertisement on the. Yeah, list. I see the handsome boy. <laughs> <laughs> and also you can see uh, actually this one, uh, 360 degree titanium core strength exercise is actually the exercises actually we created and then actually we found it and then we printed as a book. So this is a, a small book, yeah. So that uh, this is what uh, we're trying to promote because I'm I'm doing all the research uh, mostly nowadays uh, related to this course, right? So it's a uh, intellectual property of my like, with my friends and all that. So we start the presentation now. So I think uh, whatever name you call it, I still uh, maybe we call it as an international online lecture or even uh, some people will say that this. Workshop. This one is more on workshop. Am I right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it can be like that, but it's also just a and also lecture. Yeah, it's more on work, uh, more work. more than lecturing. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, you, if you anybody interested uh, to let's say to go further a little bit on this uh, book, three hundred sixty degree titanium core strength exercise, uh, just keep in touch with me and then. Um, Currently, I have two student, PhD student doing this lah, on uh, with me. Yeah. So if let's say anybody in Indonesia, especially Samarang University, so that uh, they are interested to do some research on this and then uh, keep in touch, I can send all the information. And later in the later part, I will show you uh, what are the possibility of doing research in this area. So that is much easier instead of we only do uh, what I call it uh, exercise. Yeah. All right. So hopefully everybody will benefit from this. Uh, so in in the in the start, I will just present to you what are the most important thing here is actually uh, core strength exercises and low back pain. This is the main title. This is one of the factors actually can kind of uh, you know contribution to the core strength. Yeah. So the content of my presentation or this lecture, we, uh, first is I'm going to explain about what is core, and uh, next is follow up by the low back pain, like uh, just now Dr. Titin already mentioned about uh, some you know figures in terms of uh, low back pain, you know, right? and then uh, core strength exercises and also relate to the core uh, low back pain. And also how to do a core strength assess. That means how you test the core strength. So it's actually this is I'm going to present to you. And then also other contribution in terms of core strength. So that I'm going to share with you some uh, of my own work, uh, whichever just published, and then so that I can share with you. 
and then 360 degree titanium core strength exercises and what are the benefits and how to do that. But we're going to do it today, today. Basically, at the end of the session, everybody of this class or this, uh, yeah. this group need to you know, do a practical. Yeah, just uh, if we just go for one set, maybe 10 uh, seconds. 10, 10 seconds, I think in Indonesia, what, uh, 10, 30, eh? something like that. Eh? And then uh, practical session we're going to do. And then after that, uh, if any question and answer, uh, we leave it to the last part. Huh? So, okay. So we're going to start with the core. Core means uh, what is called the, the part of something is the central of a system. I mean, core means the most important, the central, like, uh, you know, in the country, there is a central. Central means the Ibu Kota. So it's kind of a, the central for management or central for anything. So in our body, there's a central. I mean, the central is called core. Okay? So the basic and the most important part of the something means like uh, in, in terms of things that uh, anything is go through, let's say you want to study in any university. So mostly it's in the central of the country. So it still go back to the core. What are the most important? Uh? And then in terms of anatomy, in terms of the body, that is described that the muscles around the pelvis, the hip and abdominal that are used to mostly on the movement. Whatever you want to move, and as you are using that core muscles. As you move, then you use the core muscles. So it means what? As such, it is important to us because it's the center, it's the most important. Yeah? So that the, the core, because a lot of people don't concentrate on this part. Maybe people concentrate on the arm, maybe they concentrate on the chest, maybe they concentrate on the shoulder and, and other body part, but they forgot about this core. So that, that's why I'm going to talk about this. Okay? So again, the core muscles, uh, where, where is it, the core muscles? Actually, the core muscles anatomically box is actually comprised of 29 pairs of muscles. So they are actually paired, eh? mostly on the left, right, and then front and the back. So that the uh, top, bottom, so that it's actually 29 pairs. Where is it located? So that I just show you a figure. And these are the things that location of the top. So it's, it's in, in this, uh, I highlighted in the red color. But uh, again, people say, when you talk about core, this, this is only estimation of the area, but they, are, they consist of 29 pair of uh, muscles. So that you can see that actually they got, they got left and right and then uh, you know, mostly on the pair side and then even the body size and all that. Uh, so that is, these are the, the major one, but they don't, they say, uh, you know, there's a border or there's a cross line between, let's say, example, sometimes you do core exercise. Uh, it's not only, uh, uh, let's say, example, rectus uh, abdominal, but they also maybe, you know, uh, will, uh, let's say, example, train a little bit of petrolis major and all that. that they'll cross over a little bit because the muscle in the body is actually attached to each other so that they don't draw a border line like you can see it clearly. You know, I don't think so. That's the case. Like, eh? So this is core. And then uh, the core muscles, uh, what are the core muscles? A lot of people maybe don't know. The core is comprised several group. I mean, just now I mentioned that there's uh, you know 29 pairs of them, so that they actually uh, you know including the transverse abdominal, multifidus, and also diaphragm, and also pelvic floor muscles. Even the pelvic floor muscles is actually included as a core muscles. Yeah, so that Richard Jaw, Hawks, and Hart say actually 1999 they defined that. Eh? And these muscles work together to produce a maximum stability in the abdominal and also lumbar. So that example, they, they actually abdominal and also lumbar. So they actually, they, 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 this reason, yeah, just now I show you the, the 29 pairs of uh, muscles. So as well, I coordinate the movement of the arm, leg, uh, legs, and also the spine so that they work together, but they also, let's say, I want to move my arm away from my body, let's say, away. So uh, they are the one who actually uh, protect me from falling or some, you know, like imbalance. So that uh, the core is the main muscles. Yeah, again, a lot of people actually uh, ignore this core. Eh? 
So uh, again, core muscles, uh, engaging these muscles is actually is not something that most people uh, consciously means like uh, you know, you control it. No, no, no. Let's say I lift my hand forward. When I lift my hand forward, what happens? My body actually tend to lean forward so that who actually stabilize me is actually the core. So unconsciously, is actually we are using the core. Okay? So therefore, it's important to learn how to effectively core contract these muscles while performing this exercise. So any exercise that we need, we need to strengthen this part of muscles. And also the exercise involved the full body linkage such as core strength exercises have been advocated, enhanced and the capability of transmitting force through the body linkage means like because our body is actually linked so that whenever let's say I want to punch someone, it's actually the link uh, from there, the core actually help us to execute the force means like the stronger. So let's say example, we we want uh, in, in Taekwondo example, you, you want to punch someone. So actually, you actually twist the body. The twist, the body is actually the core. I think you, you can understand that. Eh? So again, um, another thing is that uh, when you talk about core, then you talk about uh, low back pain. So I just present to you what is so important uh, low back pain. Eh? So most low back pain is the result of injury. So majority of the people got low back pain is due to injury such as muscle sprain, muscle strain uh, due to sudden movement of poor body mechanic while lifting heavy object. So when you lift something heavy and then suddenly you get shot, that pain is, you know, you, you might don't know the inner muscles or whatever, which part of the muscles or, or maybe the ligament, maybe the tendons, maybe the joint, maybe the bone, you know, all of this is, is complicated in terms of the low back pain. So that uh, it may be caused the sprain or strain within these muscles. Eh? And low back pain can be a result in the certain diseases such as the cancer and spinal cord and also rupture or the uh, herniated disease or all this. So sometimes this is more uh, uh, serious kind of case. So sometimes this low back pain, you don't treat it. At the end, they become a cancer, spinal cord cancers or ruptures or, or hernia. This and I mean, I mean, this is actually, uh, I mean, have a rupture, eh? or this can be lead to the serious illness. So, better uh, don't take it uh, lightly. So, take it uh, a bit seriously. Yeah? Um, uh, another thing, the structure of lumbar, I think you, you do understand the, the structure of the lumbar means like a low back pain. So, again, yeah, I just show you that uh, actually, uh, just now I mentioned about this low back pain, the pelvic floor muscles and also the vertebra here. So, actually, there's a inner muscle. There are so many inside the small, whichever the these muscles, these muscular uh, muscles is also be actually holding our vertebra so that uh, you can see. In between of this, any single of this uh, cartilage, also that you know, inter intercostal and all that, they actually also the deep layer of muscles. There's there are so many muscles, and also you can see that this this part of the area and all this area, you can see that is so complicated. Am I right? Yeah, they're, they're so complicated. They're the bone, they the nerve, they got these other things like that. And then uh, you you go closer, the side view and the lumbar vertebra, so that you actually can see that sometimes uh, you know people got low back pain due to this intervertebral disc because of the disc or, or soft bone. Some people say that the disc is actually the problem. Uh, so that's why they got uh, low back pain. Or in, even the vertebral body itself, maybe sometimes uh, you know. In when you become old, and then uh, you know, uh, you, you you might be giving some some way of degeneration of this uh, bone or something. So there are some, and then uh, can you look at this? Uh, what I got the, the the backbone, and actually this this is actually the vertebra itself is so complicated, and on top of this bone and these uh, muscles and also the teeth. Uh, they also actually, you can see that actually all the nerve, all the nerves, the spinal cord, the nerve, all this is gone through and they are actually in between of the, you know, vertebra. So that is actually uh, quite risky. Anything uh, goes wrong with this uh, nerve, uh, their person might be, you know, disabled, you know, maybe uh, 
you know, cannot move and certain body parts. So this is this is very serious in terms of this. So now, uh, hopefully, I can. Uh, you just watch the video, and because maybe I I think you you may cannot hear the audio lah. Yeah, just just look at the wording lah. Yeah. Okay, uh, for your information, because uh, previously I was working with a national athlete like what Dr. Titin just now mentioned about how many percent, how many percent of the athlete uh, which have occur with low back pain. Uh, I have a weightlifter, he's a national athlete, and then um, I think so young. He's about 21 when he went for the operation. And actually, what the, the medical people do now in the medical field, actually, now, you know, this, 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 in the poster, this is actually uh, because his one is already almost everything is damaged so it's not you cannot remove anymore so what happens the doctor actually remove the whole thing and replace the whole disc with the uh, a new disc so i i think the now medical science is actually uh, you know become very popular in terms of this so that is for athlete per se it's not for I think even normal people they did they did that as well. So, but that is uh, just a sharing of information. Eh? So again, uh, low back pain is is a common medical problem nowadays. A lot of people facing this uh, low back pain. This represents a growing problem in a modern society with a prevalence ranging of fifteen to twenty percent in the United States, even the modern country, and then from the twenty five to forty percent in the European country as well. And then with the lifetime prevalence of the high to 60 to 70 percent. So it means like prevalence uh, of lifetime, everybody will get once in the lifetime low back pain. Okay. It's about 80 percent as well. So uh, get ready, everybody will get it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, again, uh, there is also evidence that low back pain is more frequently observed in young adult women. So this uh, 2017, they did a research and, the, and uh, the group, they did a survey and research. They found that all this uh, low back pain is actually, they attack a lot of young adult women instead of maybe others. So that uh, be careful, those are young, <laughs> your adult, the women, and then maybe the age of 20 to 30, that's a little bit younger. So that uh, these are the group actually they targeted because they feel that they're quite strong so they can lift heavy things. So at the end, when they leave the heavy thing, they might get a, a 
low back muscles uh, either sprain or strain. So at the end, low back pain is lifetime. So that is very difficult to, to make a cure on that. Okay? So that please take note. So another term uh, people used to say that is actually chronic, uh, chronic uh, low back pain. Chronic means like a long period. It's defined as a low back pain that persists more than 12 weeks. Uh, these are the study uh, Salem have been identified that actually whenever you have the low back pain, I mean about more than 12 weeks, 12 weeks means about three months. So uh, more than three months means like you, you are actually having a chronic uh, low back pain. It's not a, a acute one. It's a chronic one. It's like a, you, you most probably you get it for lifetime. You know they can. So uh, that, that study is quite a recent one, and uh, low back pain is one of the most common and challenging uh, muscular skeleton condition and encountered by the healthcare professional and is the leading cause of the absenteeism in developed country, uh, developed society. So this 2006, they did a study on that. They say even the developed country and all that, they actually got this problem. When they have a low back pain, they cannot go to work, pain. You know, that's why they're absent for working. So that is it. About uh, 120 million days of certified absent from work every year, and about 50% of the people who off work for more than six months, and then that's why they, they never return to employment. Some of them because they, they are so painful, they can't go to work anymore. So, can you imagine 120 million days absent from work? It's the world right now. This is study, uh, maybe now, maybe more. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, what are the risk factors in terms of low back pain? So that uh, we need to understand what, why is it caused the uh, low back pain? I think most of the people, most of the study have been uh, identified that heavy physical work, uh, frequent bending, twisting, lifting, pulling or pushing or even repetitive work, uh, static uh, posters and even uh, vibration and all that is it, it, actually caused low back pain. So again, the bigger word is actually physical work. So uh, if possible, the female which have a term lead too heavy. Yeah. Um, and another risk factor is actually, uh, we thought that it's only physical, but uh, this study, uh, a few studies have been identified as psychological, to include stress, distress, anxiety, depression, and cognitive dysfunction, and job, job uh, dissatisfaction will lead to low back pain as well. So don't think that it's only physical, that lifting heavy things, psychological also can be lead to the uh, low back pain. Yeah. And uh, uh, what is the cause actually when you have a low back pain? What is cause? And then uh, there are quite a number of studies. The economic cause of managing uh, low back pains are increasing globally. Uh, so, so these are the things that uh, they have been identified. And whenever people got low back pain, and uh, the cause related to this uh, low back pain is actually rising, like increasing in terms of. So the direct health cause of low back pain was estimated by 1.6 billion in the United Kingdom. So this study essentially shows that uh, in itself, uh, you know, they, are, they cost a lot. That is the health cost. That means uh, per se. That means uh, when you go to hospital because due to the low back pain, how much you're going to pay, what are the cost of operation, what's the cost of the medication and all that. So, or even uh, we have the rehab uh, cost, all that. This cost 1.6 million UK. Eh? And another thing, we, we don't talk about direct cost. There's another indirect cost. It's informal care of the loss of productivity may be estimated at 10.6 billion. So this is the study 2000, year 2000, maybe now 2020 after 20 years, because I couldn't find the latest one. So that indirect cost may be uh, more, I guess. So let's say example, what is indirect cost means like example, whenever the parents got uh, low back pain, so you need to take off. And take off means that you send the parent go to hospital. So the transportation, the cost of the, you know, everything is actually indirect cost as well. So you, you, you let's say you are doing business so that you can't carry on your business. So that, that also the, the losses or the indirect cost to you and of course to the patient as well. So that, that is indirect cost. Okay? 
Uh, other than that, what are the prevalence of the low back pain? Is actually the lifetime yeah. prevalence of low back pain. Example, at least one episode of low back pain in the lifetime is developed uh, in the developed countries is reported to be up to 85%. Means what? Everybody, 85% of human being in the lifetime, you are going to get at least one, one time whichever the, the low back pain, okay? whether it's younger or maybe seniors or older. So the uh, prevalence of low back pain is due to the part of the maybe one due to maybe you know, seniors, uh, aging population, or even the high obesity. So that remember, whoever the obesity rate high, the possibility for this group to get low back pain also high. So, um, of course, that, that, that likely affect almost everyone at the same some point. Uh, another study, 2006, 2020, uh, 2000 and 2006, is also the same, the same thing. Means that everybody at the lifetime, you're going to get at least one. So that I think we better, better uh, strengthen the low back, okay, uh, low back uh, muscles. Eh? So other than that, uh, a system... Uh, uh, Systematic review by Low and uh, 2007 indicated that the epidemiology of low back pain is in developed country is comparable uh, to the report research in developed country. So that, uh, like I think Malaysia, Indonesia, and all these, we are under the developing country. So this study shows that actually uh, we also like a developed country like UK, US, and all these developed like Japan. The, and the number of people got low back pain is similar to them. So that is the same. Whether you are a developed country or under uh, developing country, is still you got the same number in terms of the low back pain. So uh, take note that. So what happened when someone got low back pain? So uh, the effect is low back pain can affect activity of daily living. I mean, uh, when we have low back pain, example, even dressing, we can very difficult, personal hygiene, eating, and all this will be disturbed just because of low back pain. So sleep also, you don't have the mood, uh, even uh, uh, concentration is not there because of uh, uh, pain. Yeah, so low back pain is actually affect a lot of things, almost everything. Yeah? So uh, please take note that. Other than that, uh, individuals with low back pain tend, tend to have a low health related quality of life. I mean, uh, because they got low back pain, they say the quality of life is actually reducing. So it's no longer uh, example. And the longer the complaint or low back pain continue, the greater impact psychosocial factors and then we have to this disability greater than either biomechanical or even uh, biomechanical factors and all that means like whenever they they, they your, your parents or whoever your, you know talk to you always complain about low back pain low back pain i mean the actually impact on the psychosocial uh, factors and it's like in terms of the psychology in terms of you you don't feel happy and then you don't uh, you know in terms of cooperation and relationship and all that there's there's a factor yeah? So uh, when you know that this is low back pain and at the end, how to manage them, uh, management. The, the main aim of rehabilitation is overcome the physical and psychological and sociological barriers. So uh, low back pain, you cannot be only physical. And sometimes you have to include the psychological and sociological uh, uh, interaction in terms of the rehab, huh? which includes supporting a patient when the patient needs uh, experiencing his disabling or also interfere with their activity or daily, I mean, uh, encouragement. Lah. So you have to encourage them and educating that patient who fear would uh, make their condition worse and all that. So that uh, education means uh, counseling can to talk to them and then advise them, yeah, it's okay, you, you, you do it slowly and slowly and can recover and all that. Yeah? And also tailing, uh, tailoring exercises so that they work for the patient and then encourage so that uh, when you talk about low back pain, so you need to have actually some exercises is actually suitable for them so that they actually to strengthen certain part and then uh, they might reduce the pain. That is the ultimate goal. Okay? 
So other than that, uh, in terms of management uh, of low back pain, uh, these are the intervention. There's the agreement in terms of I agree, uh, they call it L3 cooperation. And in 2003, uh, these are the things that they come out of this uh, intervention or management that whichever can be used. Okay, number one is medication. So painkiller, 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 there's non stop. <laughs> Or maybe some uh, a nerve, uh, you know, because sometimes we don't know whether it's a structure, whether it's a muscle pain, or whether it's a nerve pain, or maybe the bone, uh, the structure, and all that. They, they, they are complicated uh, kind of uh, uh, technical things inside, the mechanical things inside the lower back pain. Eh? So, um, this, these are the 2003 daily suggested medication number one, number two is exercises. So this, these are the area actually want to focus for today's talk. Eh? So the, of course, there, there's some of them uh, suggest actually injection. That means you can inject whether it's a steroid or whatever, painkiller or whatever, and you can do an injection. So some equipment that you can use is actually, you use the equipment, maybe some, you know, uh, release the pain, something. And then education, I mean, uh, psychological education talk and all that. And then cognitive behavior means like uh, to trying to change the mind, giving them uh, behavior and all that. Maybe they can do it better. And then passive treatment. Uh, passive treatment means like example, a like massage and maybe some, uh, you know, traditional treatment so, or heat or cold. Or look at the passive treatment. So just all these I see. And then... This talk, this talk, we are focusing more on exercise. Uh, so we don't talk about other things like the medication, surgery, injury, equipment, medication, and all that. So that maybe other people can present other things. We even, uh, Dr. Titi may talk about passive treatment in terms of sport massage or any kind of treatment in terms of low back pain. Yeah. So we, we only focus on the core strength exercises so that uh, how to do treatment with the core, uh, low back pain is actually training. Whichever the... Um, Abdominal, lumbar, pelvic region is frequently described as a core training. So that we actually focus and narrow down into the core training now. So this sort of the therapies have been promoted as a preventive regimen, means like uh, previously people did a study and then found that actually, uh, this kind of training, this kind of exercise is actually more on preventive. And also the as a rehab uh, therapy as well. And then the strategy of what various lumbar spine or muscular injury and all that. So that to prevent that kind of uh, injury take place. So that example, the lumbar spine and also muscular, uh, muscle skeletal injury and all that, as you see in the lower back. So that uh, it's, it's a preventive. Eh? Uh, so that uh, I, how we can know that whether my lower back is actually uh, pain or not and all that, uh, and how severe the pain, how serious the pain. So the low back pain is uh, uh, there's a scale actually uh, they got I think three pain scale that it can use. Uh, this is only I presented only one. All right. So this is what we call the low back pain scale that uh, Longo, Lopino, uh, Di Nero. Um, they are, they are these are the uh, researcher they come up this uh, scale, and it's a valid and reliable questionnaire that actually to measure the rate of low back pain. This is. Uh, for some of you might doing a study on that, so that actually you can use this question. Eh? Yeah? And low uh, LBPS was rated as 0 to 5. So it's quite easy, it's 0 to 5, how pain you are. 0 means no pain, and then 5 is very severe pain and all that. Yeah? I think it's, it's quite uh, easy to do uh, in terms of this, uh, so that people, people have been doing a study on that. Uh. So other than the question, and then how can you measure the uh, core strength of low back? And then, you know, from there, you know whether this actually, they have a weak uh, core strength or strength, like a strong, very strong core, uh, core strength. So this is one of the example. And then other example, there are so many examples I've sent to you. So that actually whoever want to do a further study on this, uh, core strength or low back pain, they actually can use this all kind of simple measurement to, to measure all that. Yeah? And uh, other than that, uh, this is uh, this assessment, because you can see the diagram is, that is actually uh, on the, like uh, we are doing sit up. I mean, repetition. So when you talk about repetition, it's more on the uh, muscular endurance instead of muscular strength. Yeah? So more, more towards endurance, so that you also can do that because 
uh, want to see whether the endurance, uh, low back muscles endurance for this patient or these people is good or bad. So you can actually do that. And also, uh, other than that, they, if they say they cannot lie down position in a, a horizontal, you can do it vertical, you know, in this vertical position, you can do that as well. Uh, this is uh, another one that they press the, the machine and all that, how actually the strength. And uh, this one is actually using uh, some weights and all that, that they pull it, you know. So again, this is all the measurement. Okay, this is a kind of a simple measurement, whichever we actually can do that. Eh? And others, um, uh, a little bit of more quantified, it means that in terms of you can read the number, it's actually you can use this uh, dynamometer to, to measure this uh, reading in terms of you can, how strong the person in terms of their low back muscle strength. So you can use that. This is more uh, in terms of you want to do research because people want to see quantified the number so that uh, this will be a good uh, study for you if you want and other than that uh, assessment of course now stay the this is uh, more on the old machine very bulky machine and then i think latest uh, a lot of people using this kind of machine to do measurement now stay? yeah uh this is a normal machine or that i i have a student also did that also in terms of uh, just to measure uh, muscular strength of the low back yeah muscles and of course, this is the latest in terms of the isokinetic machine is it's always expensive. If let's say your Samara University or any university in, in Indonesia they do have a, a isokinetic machine in terms of that, I think by all means, please, I think this is more, uh, you know, quantified it, you can measure it and then use more in terms of accuracy is much, much better. You can conduct a pre and post measurement and all that. Uh, there will be giving a more accurate result uh, in terms of isokinetic machine. Yeah? So uh, from that, you know what is the measurement and all that. I think I'm going to talk a little bit on uh, other contribution before you go for practical. Then I'll show you something, and then you need to do practical. Huh? This this talk, this lecture. That's why Doctor Titin said, no problem, just go ahead. Uh, even though I know uh, this is a time, but don't worry, they they won't uh, make you. Uh, higher and all that during this post-summer, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. So uh, what are the other contributions in terms of cost strength? And then, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of high blood pressure, uh, because uh, when we created these uh, cost strength exercises, it's actually uh, also in terms of uh, uh, reducing the high blood pressures and all that, because it's isometric exercise as well. So I think you, you will understand what is isometric exercise so that uh, I published a paper on that. We did a research on that so that anybody want to follow up on that, please by all means, eh? maybe using different protocol. And then um, check on the balance. Uh, uh, you can actually check on the balance of the athlete uh, uh, in the public, in the seniors to prevent falls and all that. So in terms of balance, I actually uh, didn't check on athlete yet, but I, I did completed one study in terms of the balance with the uh, young young people, you mean teenagers. There is only a public uh, because I recruited forty students from the school so that I, I did the training for them with the uh, three hundred three hundred degree of uh, titanium core strength exercise, and then after that, uh, after twelve weeks, I do another assessment and all that so that. As a pre post uh, intervention uh, training. Yeah? So, uh, another project I'm doing actually uh, with the seniors because uh, seniors, those uh, in, in terms of senior means like I think in Indonesia, I don't, I don't know what is the age uh, because in Malaysia, when you talk about seniors, means like uh, older people which have uh, above 60 years old. So, that uh, actually I'm, I'm recruiting some of them to do. Uh, so be, because they are the one actually this group actually they, they fall, they always fall. So that uh, when they fall, the cause in terms of the you know, social economy and all that, that they actually so many things. I don't know because they talk about this. These are, the, these are the things they are giving to you. And then the core strength and uh, core endurance definitely in sports, in athletes, in hockey players, in swimming, in, in sprinters, in marathon running, in and all that, all the athletes. You can do that, yeah, and the cost and as long as it's more important, all right? And then, of course, the sports performance, uh, 
there are few study in terms of the sprinter, in terms of marathon runner, in terms of swimmer and all that. They have been doing the study, even karate spin and all that. They did. So why not you, you can actually go on. And of course, uh, I, think, uh, I think two to three, uh, yeah, I think three study, previous study have been shown that, um, you know, to improve the academic performance, actually you improve the course. Right? Because improve course, right? that means you can actually stay uh, in the right position so that when you stay or in the, the poster is good, so that actually the concentration is by, uh, better. So when the concentration is better, means like, uh, at the end, they read more, they understand more, so that they actually the academic performance is better. So that one also, uh, if you, you can do that if you want. And other than that, uh, general health, actually uh, quite a number of studies also talk about uh, sex performance and daily activity and etc. There are so many, so that uh, you actually can do. Uh, this is the, the paper, uh, whichever I use my, my own, uh, this new information. Uh, to conduct a study on that so that actually um, it was published in International Journal of Psychosocial Rehabilitation. So that uh, I think recently only two years, it was uh, 2020. You know? So uh, a new uh, isometric exercise training induced reductions of resting blood pressure in hypertension patients and as per the study means like this study is actually um, using uh, my intervention to treat this hypertensive patient. So uh, result from that is actually significant actually improved. I mean, uh, they reduce uh, the hypertensive reading. Yeah, so that uh, it, I think anybody want to find more about this, you can go into the uh, International Journal of Psychosocial Rehab so that you can find this paper so that uh, you may carry out uh, another study in terms of it. Uh, because mine is quite simple. I only take the baseline, five minutes and 10 minutes. So if possible, after 10 minutes, okay, you only can see result. But uh, I wanted to go further, actually, this uh, core strength or isometric exercise, how long they can last. Uh, that one I didn't do. I mean, uh, after your training, uh, how long they can sustain and keep the patient in the low in terms of the blood pressure is lower, so that I, I didn't do uh, so that anybody want to continue that I by all means. Uh, okay. uh, another study is also uh, by my my group and then other international journals, also the same journals, uh, actually also new one is 2020, and uh, we actually uh, recruited a group of people, the 360 degree tightening constant exercise, and then you put the R here, R means like register or IP. Yeah? So improve balance in teenagers. So these are the, but uh, we still got more to do because maybe male, female are different, we don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, athlete and non-athlete are different, we don't. And maybe the different age, uh, by, by 10, by 12, by 14, or 16, all the different age, we don't know. But uh, these are the things that actually still a lot of uh, loophole in terms of uh, can do or even uh, intervention uh, protocol, let's say, we are using uh, 12 weeks, maybe someone want to reduce 10 weeks or 8 weeks or, or maybe the frequency in terms of that also we can do that. So that this, these are the things that actually are published and all that. Yeah? So uh, another thing is like uh, other than this, uh, core strength also in the sport performance, there are quite a number of people doing the sport performance. Yeah? And uh, in terms of also sports performance, athletic performance, uh, you can see that actually quite a number. Uh, you can search from uh, either this uh, ISI or Scopus uh, Journal. So International Journal of Sport Physiology and Performance. Uh, and they, they actually found that uh, you know, this, this study actually spring, springs performance. Can you imagine that? You know, in terms of, uh, you know, even swimming and, order and karate spinning. They will karate, they, they do a spinning and that, and after the course time. So, but uh, they don't use this 360 uh, titanium course time. They use the normal uh, course strength. Okay? So I think it's good. So, uh, and then, of course, uh, core strength and sex life and all that is very important. Core, work up and all that. There are quite a number of studies shows that. And also, uh, they found that actually these are the things that, uh, you know, core strength helps me internally. Especially in the area of oxygenated and also 
building the pelvis floor muscles. And then these pelvic floor muscles, I realized that uh, recently quite a number of people have been concentrating on this. And uh, they have talked about female in terms of like, you know, also the same uh, in terms of the sex performance of the female. So these are the especially critical guys and at the middle age and beyond the male that uh, is experiencing loss of uh, uh, reactive strength and all of that. So these are the study have been shown that. And other than that, uh, that's why we come out of this new invention and register the intellectual property. So we, we register because for your information in Malaysia, if you want to register one intellectual property, um, the author need to pay about Malaysia ringgit is about 6,005. So I say, oh, I'm not going to register, but uh, fortunately, my university actually pay for me. So the university in Malaya is actually pay the cost in terms of filing this uh, property. So I refiled uh, so far one five uh, intellectual properties. So this is one, this is my core order. So it's actually, uh, you know, we work together to, to come up this book. This is the book, I see. So, um, uh, so uh, this, these are the exercises in this book. So that uh, for you, everyone in this group, uh, later we are going to do this. Eh? So uh, both elbow group. This, later I'm going to show you one by one. You perform and then in this group that you show the video and share with everyone. Is it all right? Okay. So that uh, number one, both elbow from here. And then you turn to the right hand, and turn to the right hand, and then after you turn again, and then both your leg and then body is straight, and then after that you turn again, that means to your left elbow, yeah, left side, just now was right side, and then you turn again to face down, yeah. So after they turn again, you turn to the right again, I mean, always you're turning your body into one direction. So you turn again, and then to your one hand, just now was using elbow. And then after that, uh, you go down with the left leg up, body straight, like that, yeah? body straight. And then uh, again, uh, leg uh, up. And then after the right, and then after that, uh, left hand, you turn again to the left hand. And then uh, alternate, uh, alternate uh, left hand and right leg reach. And then, okay, uh, alternate right hand and left hand. And the last exercise is actually super. So I think uh, these are the things that I'm going to show you. Um, I think the video, we skip the video, maybe the, the no point because the video got no sound. So that uh, hopefully these are the things that can actually, uh, can actually strengthen the uh, low back muscles. And then with the strengthen of the low back muscles, it's actually you prevent or reduce the rate of low back pain so that uh, it will strengthen the area. So in terms of the you know, low back pain to not come to you. Okay, with that, I think uh, I hand it over to Dr. Titin. Uh, Dr. Titin, can, are you okay? Or... I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, are we going to present and then let them uh, do the practical now? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay, now I will talk to them in Indonesia. Yeah, it's okay? please, please. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Um, untuk para peserta, jadi Dr. Lee menyampaikan tadi presentasinya, jadi step by step, sekalian mencoba dari gerakan yang diberikan Dr. Lim. Jadi kalau saat ini ada di mana di rumah nanti sekali mencoba gerakan tadi kalau plang gerakan front plang bisa dilakukan yang dengan gerakan yang di samping sekali dilakukan oke okay. uh, bisa dimengerti jadi setelah ini kalian melakukan dan dokter Lim akan lihat apakah itu benar atau tidak oke okay. oke okay. okay, dokter Lim is it alright I already told to them Ah. So I share again with the screen so that the from the screen yeah. can perform, but they need to show their screen as well to me. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, it's okay. So yeah. just they use the video, they yeah. open the video, and then they can they do. Which for the, the screen? Okay, the, the 
the participants is actually have to put their handphone or whatever so that they can show uh, how they perform the things. So I show one by one, and then uh, everybody need to perform ten seconds. Is it okay? Yeah, only ten seconds. Hanya sepuluh detik saja. It's okay, the problem for me. Okay, but I will, I will skirt. I will just okay. <laughs> so maybe not include me. <laughs> okay, everybody can uh, just go to your video, and uh, what I mean is I'm going to show the the one, the first one. This is the double elbow. Ah, uh, this one. Okay. Uh, can everybody get ready? And then put the your handphone or whatever the video into your. So okay. Uh, I I will check the time. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. Um, hello, Monggo. Silakan untuk para peserta bisa mencoba gerakan yang dipresentasikan Dr. Lim. Dan diperlihatkan, kalau bisa dilihat sama videonya, jadi Dr. Lim bisa mengecek. Uh, gambar saja, yeah. only gambar saja, tak ada video. Only gambar, only gambar. So, so bisa di screenshot. Perform this one first, this one. Oke. Okay. Okay, ya, hanya... Ya, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, hanya satu gambar dulu aja. Uh, uh, mungkin Bona Ventura mau coba dilihat Bona Ventura? Bona? Are you, I, is it everyone okay? Yeah, everyone. Everyone can do that. Okay, so it... ready? Ready? See, body straight and then look forward. Okay, ready? I count for 10 seconds. Eh? Okay, I look at my stopwatch. Okay, go. Go. Okay, I will do it. Hmm, In okay. here. <laughs> video, show your okay. video. Show yeah, you it. cannot see me. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, stop. Okay, turn your body okay. to your right side. Elbow also, hand straight. The other okay. hand. Okay. Are you okay? Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm okay. Go. Go. 10 seconds. Start for now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, stop. Next one. You turn your body uh, facing uh, supine. This one, uh, just. Uh, your leg is actually um, 90 degree, yeah? Okay, ready? Go. Okay. I will do that. Go. Okay, stop. Turn again to your left elbow. Yeah, this way. All right. Okay, leg and hand straight in a straight line. Okay, ready? And go. Okay, stop. Uh, next one, actually, when you turn again to your right hand side, and then see your, your hand with your palm, mm -hmm. and then your head look forward. Eh? Head look forward, straight. Okay, ready? So this, yeah. Okay, ready? The both hand is very right. Yeah, go. Okay. Go. And stop. Uh, next one, actually, you turn your body to the right hand again, then you with your arm only, M, like a, a tongkat. <laughs> so, uh, other part is in the straight line. Okay, are you okay? Now, go. Okay. Go. Okay, stop. <sighs> Oh, turn turn oh your body God. lie down in a lie down position, but at this time, mm -hmm. your left leg up, left leg in the supine position, then uh, your thigh in a parallel position. Your thigh in a parallel. Yeah? Okay, ready? Go. Uh, okay, I'm taking a rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, stop. Uh, now, next one, right leg up supine so that your make sure your leg up and your leg is actually parallel together, not up here. Eh? The leg. Okay, ready? Go. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, stop. Next one. You turn again your body and then your tongkat is actually your left hand has a tongkat. Lah. So that the uh, other part is actually straight line. Okay, and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. Oh my God. Okay, stop. I'm too old. <laughs> and uh, now you turn your body facing down again. And uh, you would uh, alternate uh, left hand up, right leg up, like this. Right leg, left hand. Okay, look forward. Okay, ready? 10 seconds now. Go. Okay, the other maybe also can do it. Harris, you can do. Ujia also, Mr. Ahmad Agong, you can do that. Can, 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 can. Everybody can do one. All right, stop. And next one, alternative is actually on the left hand and right leg yeah okay ready, ready? go 10 seconds 10 detik <laughs> okay okay stop <sighs> the last one actually you you put your body flat and hand leg Superman. <laughs> straight and lift up only okay ready up yeah. Up, up, sama Superman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Superman, superwoman of uh, Indonesia. Okay, done. Superman. <laughs> okay, done. So, okay. Okay. Oh my God, it's better. Yeah. Oh, I, my look weapon is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, actually, in women, they have a look weapon after they have like pregnant, right? Yeah, and yeah. So sometime after, uh, in one month they have a yeah. injury, uh, pain. Yeah. Uh, two or two days like that. Oh, I see. Ah. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, this this is good. this uh, this is the video I show you first, and then uh, later there will be Q and A. Is it all right? Yeah, is it all right? Ah, uh, okay. Now I show the video first, and then uh, these are the video, but I think audio is not working. Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> okay. This is good. This membrane.
Okay, uh, with that, I would like to say thank you very much. Uh, and then now we can just move on to uh, Q&A sessions. And hopefully, everybody <laughs> will benefit on that. Yeah, please, Dr. Titin. Uh, okay, yours. thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I would like to welcome Dr. Setia Rahayu. Uh, she is my supervisor when I was a graduate student. And also have welcome uh, Mr. Sugiyato. He is uh, the, the chief of department exercise science. Okay. For science. And also have a Dr. Siti Baitu, your friend. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now it's time for question and answer, right? Yep. Okay, so please anyone, if you have any question, you can ask directly to Dr. Lim Bon Hoi and raise your hand. What? Tuti, you wanna ask him something? Tapi dalam bahasa Indonesia ya bu. Okay, no problem. I, I try to understand. If I cannot understand the petiting, you may uh, translate for me. Lah. Eh? Okay? Uh, yeah, please. Okay. Uh, itu, Bu, kalau orang jogging, mm. tapi belum uh, sudah melakukan exercise atau uh, pemanasan, nah, setelah jogging itu biasanya kalau orang itu kan yang pegel di bagian kaki, ya, Bu? Nah, di, di kaki, kalau... Ya. Ya, kalau kasus ini tuh yang pegel bagian punggung, punggung bagian bawah, punggung. Eh, yang ada pinggang, pinggang, ya, pinggang bawah itu. I, itu kenapa ya bu? Nyeri? Ah, uh, uh, enggak masalahnya uh, dengan joking. Uh, so, so oke, okay, so Tuti asking about after someone doing running joking, some they after they doing exercise like a jogging or running they have a problem pain in the leg in the leg on the calf muscle calf muscle And he asking uh, which muscle <laughs> for low back pain which muscle usually have a pain in low back pain he said like, he asking about that which muscle but yes. he say is on the calf muscle am i right yeah After yeah, they, they, after joking, they feel tired in the calf, right? In the, yeah. in the tight, tight nah. muscle. Uh, ya, begitu ya, Tuti ya? Iya, Bu. Ya, jadi, so, jadi kamu tanya otot di mana yang bagian pembunuh yang biasa sakit gitu ya? Iya, Bu. Uh, ya, yeah. so he asking about the muscle. Uh, when have a pain in the low back pain. When got pain in the back pain. Which part, which part pain? Can, can I clarify which part pain? After yeah. jogging? After jogging, usually the people get huh. tired in the tight muscle or huh. the calf. But uh, he asking sometime, got a pain in the, in the, how to say this is, Back pain. Back pain. Back pain. Okay. Yeah. After And he asking about the specific muscle, which specific muscle that hmm. got pain. Okay. Um, can I, can I just answer that because uh, the pain may be occur by so many kind because when you do jogging, all right? Yes. Yes. Two T. Is it two T? Yeah. When you jog jogging, what happened is that our body is actually on the vertical position. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Vertical position, actually you're running so that each time it's actually impact on the vertebra. You know what I mean? So this, these are the uh, joint of a uh, uh, vertebra. So there are many joints, you know, running and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, whenever you want to do jogging, the most thing is we can't identify, I can't tell you exactly which muscle, but uh, it most probably may be the pelvic muscles and also the inner side of the you know the uh, what I call it the, the, the muscle whichever join or support the vertebra 
So most probably the kind of muscle will be, you know, activated. So that that's why I would suggest to do that uh, if possible, um, instead of you talk about this core strength, maybe the, the most important thing is before you go for jogging or anything that uh, make sure you do enough of warming up exercises and all that stretching is very, very important. So when you do the stress means like uh, you do a stretching before the exercise, it's actually you stress the muscles like that. So it means what? Uh, they're trying to pull the muscle and then they're trying to pull the supply, the oxygen, uh, supply the nutrient to the muscles are trying to work so that even stress the uh, inner muscle so that maybe after that you don't feel any pain mm -hmm. uh, after jogging or any exercises. That's why I say uh, pre-exercise uh, any, even though jogging, you need to do uh, pre- Warming up. Uh, yeah, warming up. So I think we can avoid that. So to identify which muscle, I can't even tell you because you need to see actually which part. You know, let's say after jogging, maybe the calf muscle definitely is the, the gastro is having some problem. And then uh, some people, it's not so painful, it's not so harmful. I think it should be no problem. So that uh, after jogging, maybe you do some stretching again, I think it should be recovered after that. It shouldn't be a problem so much. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully, yeah. I can answer to this question because uh, it's very difficult to identify hundred percent that which muscle is pain. Yeah? Okay. okay. Now it's turn. Vishnu, you can ask him directly. Vishnu. Hello, Vishnu. Where are you? Okay. You can ask him. Okay. If not, I will help to Vishnu to asking about when doing this exercise can be variation with the other exercise. So, uh, yeah. In this course, okay. this uh, 360 degree titanium course, right? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll suggest, um, let's say you doing any aerobic session, example, eh? Yes. All right. You do your aerobic session finish first, then mm -hmm. only you take about maybe about 10, 15 minutes to, to actually at the last session, you do this core strength. So let's say this is for normal people. Let's say you play, uh, let's say example, you are uh, athlete. Athlete means that you, you go training for running, for playing football, playing any games. So that is your training session, am I right? So I'll suggest you to uh, practice the core strength. It should be embedded after the training session, official training session. So it should be after that. Because uh, I'm afraid that you do at the beginning before you go for training or something like that, you actually, when you do core strength, you use a lot of energy, uh, inner muscles. So the inner muscle, you use it, they become weak. So when they become weak, you go for football training, suddenly you got injury. Then you say this core strength is useless. So it's not that uh, core strength is very useful, but it's just I'll suggest you to use it to practice that after any training session. That means you you let's say you go four days or five days of training session. I'll suggest you maybe uh, after your training session you take ten minutes, fifteen minutes to do this core uh, three hundred and sixty titanium core strength. So it's actually embedded means like uh, the strengthen. And let's say example in the you know athlete they have a periodization plan they have a you know plan one year plan so when should they practice um, this course rank? I suggest you to do the course rank in the off season let's say off season you can do three or four times per week but you you are pre or this maybe once a week or twice a week so that is because. Any core strength is a prerequisite for any sport. So you strengthen the core before the training actual of unnecessary. Tolong di mute dulu ya, yang lain. Mohon maaf, yang lain tolong di mute. Ya. Did I answer your question? Okay, next. 
Any other question? Just just raise your hand and then uh, I think Dr. Titing will uh, give you a chance. Just uh, I think the, the signal is you put a hand like that and then people know that you want to ask questions. <laughs> I think that is a signal now. Am I right? Anyone, anyone, question? Yeah. So the ticket, the Jody, yeah? Ah, please. Question, question. Yeah. yeah, hello, my name is Jordi. Yeah. Uh, so, Dr. Limbun Ho, yeah. I have, I've seen your presentation is good enough for me, yeah. but there's still uh, uh, the part can still bothering my mind. Yeah. Uh, the part is uh, there is uh, some some treatment. Yeah, some treatment can reduce the low back pain. Mm -hmm. uh, you write uh, you write on the on your presentation. Coloring mm -hmm. uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can uh, explain it uh, or describe it more. So I can, uh, I can, I will know that uh, tailoring exercise well. Okay. Um, uh, as I, I presented uh, in the slide, yes. uh, in terms of treatments, uh, low back pain, there are so many. Number one is actually medication, correct? Oh, yeah, of course. So number two is actually exercise. And of course, the injections and, uh, you know, in terms of counseling, in terms of education, in terms of other things they got, uh, I listed in the presentations there. So exercise is actually one of the option. You know, there are people using, let's say, example, yoga, you know, to practice mm -hmm. yoga, actually they improve because of the flexibility and all that to, to basically supply the blood and uh, nutrients and all that into the pain area. That's why they feel released. So that also people doing that. So exercise is actually quite a big chunk, a big, big, uh, what you call it, area. So um, exploring only because when you strengthen, you, you make it strong or uh, lower back muscles. That's why you reduce the chance of getting low back pain. You know what I mean? So that yeah, this- again, again. Yeah, there, there, there are so many people doing all the low back uh, exercises and all that. There are people using uh, massage. There are people using whatever you just name it. There are so many carving, hot one, cold one, uh, you know, so many. And then there are people using the stretching, which they think that stretching is actually suitable. But uh, that's all as long as it can work for you by all means. But this core strength is actually more towards the prevention. Means like when you strengthen the part, the part won't get injured easily. So they don't get injured injury. That means they don't get low back pain. You see, and am I ask <laughs> answer your question? Uh, I mean this. Uh, on this case, uh, I want to ask a tailoring exercise uh, that you have uh, right on your presentation. I I don't get your question. Uh, this, uh, in this case, I want to ask you about tailoring exercise on your presentation. Dr. Titing, what is that? Uh, can... uh, sorry. I, I don't get you. The, there's one word. Uh, what? What is that actually? Uh, uh, I mean, in this case, ah. I want to ask you about uh, tailoring exercise on your presentation. Parent. Tailoring exercise. Tailoring. You mean pairing two person? No, no, no. Tailoring. Tailoring, tailoring. Exercise. What is diary? I, I uh, no. Tailoring, tailoring. I, I still couldn't get your question. <laughs> tailoring. Yeah. I, I got your uh, tailoring exercise from your presentation. Uh, that's still bothering my mind. 
And then uh, if we said just just raise your hand and then uh, I think that the people will uh, give you a chance. Just uh, I think the, the signal is you will put the hand like that and then people more <coughs> ask questions. I think that is a signal now. Then. Am I right? And uh, Dr. Titin, can you uh, explain to me clearly a little bit uh, so that I can understand the question? I try. What, what is that? The pairing? What is that? Tiring or pairing? Tiring. Tiring. Yes, of uh, course. Very tired means? Tyler, Taylor. Tailoring. Yeah. You mean just now the 360 core strength is very tight? Okay, uh, good good question. <laughs> Have yes. you performed the 360 uh, titanium core strength? Uh, just now we did only 10 the tick, total. 10 seconds. Okay? Let's say people feel that very tiring in terms of performance, this one. I will suggest you. Go for five seconds first. Five seconds. So whenever the person go for five seconds, they don't feel like so tiring. Am I right? All right. And yeah. from my experience, you can go for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, slowly increase until about 20 for my, because I did a uh, uh, now is currently with another study. Uh, I have first study with the, you know, the, the hypertension patient. Uh, when I told them to do 20 seconds, they just cannot do. So I started with five, six, and then slowly to 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 and then up to 15. You know what I mean? So it, it's okay. It's not that tiring, uh, but uh, you have to do it progressively. If let's say you know that your subject or your, your patient come to you is quite senior, quite old, so don't go straight away to 10. Go for five repetitions, that's five seconds. I see, okay? Yeah, of course. For seniors, uh, just now when you perform that, did you realize that when you use the arm? The arm. The arm eh? is very tiring, am I right? So you yeah. can you can actually skip that if you don't want. Uh, I know that when I created this and then uh, uh, we practice that the arm, the elbow is okay, the elbow is okay, but the arm, straight arm like that, wow, that one is quite tiring. So you actually for seniors and all that, you can skip that. So they don't feel so tired in terms of performing this exercise. Okay, did I answer? Okay. Then I, I actually conducted to the young kids, uh, which is only age six and seven. And uh, age six and seven, <laughs> uh, they got no problem. They, they, they also can perform uh, these 12 exercises. Instead of you cut down the exercises, but you start with maybe five seconds. Okay? Yeah. That's very clear. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Any other question? <laughs> Any other question? <laughs> Doctor, Dr. Kipin, any other question from the audience, from the audience? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Limbo. Yes, yes, please, by all means, yeah. Ya, yeah. bisa terlihat? Ya, yeah, bisa aja. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Uh, saya Nasrullah. Ya. Yeah. 
tiga bulan yang lalu kita ketemu di UM. Oh iya kak. Dengan proses. Nah, masih ingat? Oke okay, ya. Oke oke. Ya sedikit, Mr. Lim. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Kapan latihan ini bisa diberikan kepada penderita low back pain? Apakah ada perlakuan sebelumnya, misalkan di masas dulu atau ditraksi dulu supaya kembali baru diberikan exercise atau ketika low back pain langsung diberikan exercise? Begitu, coba. Terima kasih. Uh, can Can Titin terus translate a little bit? Ya. Yeah. Uh, I'm not hundred percent. Bukan seratus peratus dapat semua soalan ini. Nanti jawab salah pula. <laughs> Titi, can you translate ya? Yeah. yeah. So, Mister Ahmad Darasua asking about so when the exercise can do so directly getting low back pain or after get low back pain or before, right? Ah. Yeah. So after. After they got low back pain, is it okay to get this exercise? Yeah, uh, good question. I think uh, because I'm talking about core strength and low back pain. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, if let's say this exercise just now I mentioned before is actually more towards prevention, all right? So that you prevent before you get low back pain. But let's say you already got low back pain. It's not the severe one. Bukan yang uh, sakit yang sangat-sangat uh, teruk, very bad pain. Then I will suggest you to let's say a mild pain. So you you trying to strengthen it. When it strengthen the muscles, actually you can overcome this pain. So if let's say you got a slightly pain, it's okay, but not too severe pain. Severe pain, a lot of people. I mean, they, they can't move and all that. You still tell them to do exercise. I don't think so. They can do. Uh, no. Yeah. So did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any else again? Uh, from. I'm sorry. Uh, last time I don't know that I have mood, so my voice is not here in here. So from Natasha Marcelina. He asking she asking about if there is someone who get problem with low back pain an athlete is it possible to them to get recover completely after doing exercise I I still cannot get because uh, the, the quite number of interfering okay so if athlete get yeah. low back pain yeah at so least possible to them to get recover completely with this exercise and they can back to performance again they can perform like before yeah oh um it, it, it depends of uh, again to athlete uh, to to go back 100% as a normal again i think is kind of difficult. When you got low back pain, uh, and also maybe it depends on which mechanical that got problem. If muscles, I think most probably can go back to train. If let's say in a scaling term, you know, the, the disc got problem, uh, then uh, very difficult for the athlete to go back as uh, normal again, as uh, perform as 100% as previously. Uh, even though they, they, they strengthen the muscles, but the disc, you cannot strengthen so much. You only can uh, maybe protect on it. So let's say example, the, the muscles have been, or maybe the nerve in this area uh, the rupture by the, just now I show you the video, you know, rupture by the in, intercostal disc. Even though how strong you practice with the core strength, uh, it's still still mechanical means hard this ob object in the low back already uh, you have to do some operation to get it removed or or maybe repair that 
so that even though you practice how much or you practice your course time, at the end, the mechanical part you cannot do. The bone is rupture, the, uh, the disc between the, uh, is a rupture, and even the nerve. Uh, but maybe, let's say, example, the muscles of the inner muscle of the you know, part, uh, maybe you can strengthen, but it's still the mechanical part is already destroyed or, or some uh, this generation. So, you can I come back completely, right? Can I 100%? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I just go there, I example my, my athlete weightlifter, eh? Weightlifter? Mm -hmm. uh, he went for the operation and then the intercostal disc actually now, I think the, the mechanical in terms of the, he, he cannot, he removed the whole piece and yeah. He, he he replaced with the uh, fiberglass one, <laughs> not the original. Now, oh, really? yeah, he replaced with the fiberglass now. Uh -huh. So he, he, in between of the bone, yeah, you know, uh -huh. because in the fibrosis, the 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 this normal this or, or general this they uh, now the medical is so advanced that uh, they use the this in between is actually uh, fiberglass. Oh my God! So uh, it's so he, this athlete is actually uh, in terms of athlete life, mm -hmm. he cannot go back to weightlifting. He only can be a coach. He cannot be an athlete anymore because, you know, fiberglass, uh, even though it's lasting, then uh, I asked him whether you still got pain. He said once a while, once a while, still got pain. So that even how strong you train, that, but you, you can support it, but the pain mechanical is still there. So I hope that I can answer this question that uh, what you mentioned just now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lim Bon Hoi, for answering my question. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Why are you not asking by yourself? Oh, sorry, Miss, because I think my speaker was in trouble. So I now your speaker is working after the answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now is Mr. Rahman Amanullah. Okay. Rahman, you there? Raman? Yes. Okay. Santika? Santika, where are you? Uh, okay. Santika asking about the mechanism of Thank low you. back pain from the overuse training. Saya. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. So, I mean, Rahman Amniloh will asking. Thank you. Saya mohon maaf ya, menggunakan bahasa Indonesia. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Bisa ditransit sama Bu Titin. Saya mau terkait uh, ketika kita latihan push up, dan itu kan pastinya melatih otot dada juga melatih otot besar. Dan ketika baik atau tidak, ketika kita melakukan latihan otot besar atau contohnya push up setiap hari, baik atau tidak, dan ketika... Uh, otot itu mengalami rasa nyeri, sebaiknya diistirahatkan, diistirahatkan terlebih dahulu atau tetap uh, melatihnya setiap hari atau melatihnya walaupun otot itu masih nyeri. Oke, okay. I got it. Can, can you do just a... Yeah. Okay, so, I, yeah. I don't really understand the nyeri, nyeri. It's okay. I know you you just do like this, so you uh. mean you... <laughs> <laughs> I just press make sure I can hear it. Uh, you know. Yeah, okay, please. He, he asking about if doing exercise like a push up every day. Yeah, push up every day. So is it okay or not? And then if the pectoral is mild, the, the chest muscle, the big chest muscle, uh, has yeah. get injury, get pain. Uh, it must take a rest or just doing exercise again? You mean the perform? Yeah, push, push up, up, push and up, then up chest. Yeah, and then the big muscle like pectoral is mayor, get major, pain, uh, uh, pain. Uh, get pain. So he must take a rest and then continue to exercise or not doing again or just Relax, take a rest first for a while for two days, or just still doing every day, still same. If okay. I don't get pain. 
I, I think in terms of doing push-up is a common exercise. Everybody can do one. Am I right? So it depends. Yeah. Maybe, uh, who is that? Roman. Roman or Amin. Uh, ah. no, when, when, when he do exercise of the push-up, maybe is overdoing, I guess. Lah. So that overdoing means like you never, uh, normally you do maybe push-up only one set, 10, 10, or three sets, uh, 10, 10, 10. But suddenly you do about 20 or 30 or 40 per push-up. At the end, you feel pain. Uh, but that kind of pain is normal pain. There's only muscular pain, muscle pain only, uh, because it's overuse. And it's, uh, normally, let's say you are overuse, and uh, I, I think no problem with that. Uh, let's say, example, you want to fast recovery. Of course, the muscles is always uh, replenish or recover with the uh, high protein. So if you enough protein, the rate of recovery must be faster. If not enough protein, then mean uh, you might take about two three days to recover. So in terms of the to answer your question, whether you need to uh, continue to exercise or not, if let's say, uh, what is your objective actually? Uh, what do you want? Uh, in bodybuilding, in bodybuilding, uh, people always say. Uh, no pain, no gain. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I say like that. That's why what you want. You, you just want a normal exercise. Uh, why you need to do until you pain? No need. Just do that. You feel that oh, I cannot do anymore. So don't feel until pain. That means when you feel pain, that means the muscles is actually uh, overused or overtrained. So overtrained means like maybe the cell, some of the cell is actually dying or some injured the cell. So they feel pain. So the recovery need to take place in terms of like actually a supply with the high protein so that uh, rebuild the muscles again. So that I think uh, when the pain is an indication for us, it's actually to stop exercise. So uh, when to train again, I think it depends on the recovery rate again. Uh, because when I was in the bodybuilding, we always today you train, you don't feel pain. I mean, you are not actually trained yet. <laughs> so. Yeah. Until you feel pain, and then you say that oh, this is good. So that uh, after that you go and uh, take high protein, so that uh, high protein is actually our you know rebuild the cell again, so that uh, become a bigger muscles. So I hope that I can answer your question in terms of the push up, yeah. It's in terms like the destroy and rebuild, destroy and rebuild again, right? Yes, yes, yes. Destroy, destroy and rebuild. Destroy and then rebuild. That that is the bodybuilding concept. But for normal people, why we need to do that? No need to destroy it. Just uh, you feel a little bit uh, uncomfort, a little bit of pain. Yeah, stop enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So again, I think muscles. Uh, in terms of training, is always talking about adaptation. Am I right? Yeah. So the adaptation is like uh, today you do 10, after that tomorrow only 12, 13, 15 or something like that. So that is progressively uh, improve, increase the repetition load or even set. So uh, weight training is not like today you think that I want to build my chest, become very big. Today you put uh, 50 kg and then you do push up or something. Like, I think that is too much. Am I right? So essentially, uh, you kill the set. Okay. I hope that I uh, answer Amin's uh, question. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And this is asking from Santika. He asking about the risk facts, the risk factor of low back pain. This is because of overuse or the 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 nutrition is deficit or malnutrition. This is also can prevalence to low back pain. And this is have uh, any recovery that you recommend for the exercise? For uh, like a stretching first, first and the position. First, first question first means. Um, he asking about the mechanism of low back pain. Mm. Uh, what is caused, or this is caused because of overuse doing something, or they because of malnutrition hmm. uh, uh, they uh, wait wait, wait. just it? answer this question first huh? yes yes uh, most of the low back pain uh, previous study I already mentioned that uh, it due to uh, most of the thing is like like sudden leap heavy things most of mm -hmm. the yeah so uh, let's say example uh, suddenly you leave uh, something you, you thought that you can leave something the object let's say you leave the, let's say the 
uh, whatever cabinets or, or any other goods like very heavy. So suddenly you lift up and then ah, you got pain. So most of the previous studies shows that it's actually lifting heavy object. So in terms of mechanical, of course, um, because the overuse is one of them, especially let's say example, hockey player. Hockey player, you know hockey? Yeah. yeah. Hockey, they always bend their body. So by hook by hook, they actually overuse the lower back muscles. So they are the one, the group actually, uh, the lower back pain is the highest compared to any other sport. So again, they are actually all used. They don't strengthen the lower back muscle. That's why they got it. So in terms of mechanical, I think for normal people, it's not because of uh, malnourished. It's now, I think in terms of nutrition, not so much of involvement in terms of low back pain. But previous study have been mentioned that because of the dealing with uh, most of the uh, heavy object. Okay? okay. Uh, I hope I answer the question. And uh, of course, uh, they, they say uh, there's another thing is actually uh, sometimes low back pain is also due to sudden change of direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. i just give you an example. Let's say early morning, you wake up and then you want to take your handphone. Let's say example, you reach up. Oh! Then you yeah, yeah, let's feel like this. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's, it shows that it's actually the sudden change of direction or extended certain movement, whichever is beyond that you can do. That's why they say you cause of the low back pain. So mm -hmm. it's heavy thing and sudden change of direction. Sudden okay. change. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thank you. And this is have a question again. Do you have time? Still have time? No problem. Just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. And this is from Anila. Uh, Mr. Lim, do you ever hear about an issue that when you have a back pain, just try to lying down on the floor, lying down on the floor like that, and then try to get sleep on the floor slightly. Mm. What do you think about that? Oh, um, yeah, on the floor is actually the the yeah, just doing the floor flat and flat surface. Mm -hmm. Flat surface. Mm -hmm. It's surface on the floor. Is it flat surface you're talking about yeah. on the floor? Yes, slightly on the floor like that. What yeah. do you think about that? Okay, uh, I would suggest maybe uh, because you see, uh, we need to understand our vertebra. Vertebra means like our structure of vertebra just now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's uh, actually the curve in the lower back. Yeah. So when you sleep on the floor, whichever the hard surface, mm -hmm. it's, it's still the gap. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's still that there's a gap because mm -hmm. you see our vertebra is actually like that and then curve, you know. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, the lower back, there's a gap there. So if possible, you put something, uh, let's say the gap there, so that uh, your lower back pain will be uh, become very mild instead of. You know, because the, the, the gap there then actually give you uh, what you call it, the, the stress on the lower back again, so that actually you feel more severe pain, you so reduce the pain. So that uh, most of the, I think, prevention people using, this is more on uh, treatment in terms of passive treatment. You know, like massage, you know, passive treatment, the person is, is passive, it's actually because the, the vertebra is actually our backbone, is actually the curve like that. So that gap, a small gap if you can put something maybe plots or, or some oh whatever things that you want to then uh, you feel better yep hopefully okay. i'll answer the question yeah yeah and then this is from andre yukaswara i think it's alumni from ikor he asking about he have a friend their eggs about 30 until 62 30 and 62 years old mm. and they have a uh, head spinal surgery, so they have surgery on the pain. Mm. Uh, what do you recommendation for this exercise? Okay, uh, good question. I think uh, in terms of surgery, uh, you see, look, any surgery after you've done the surgery, what the doctor will tell you to do? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes, yes. yes so yes. what happens is... This exercise, uh, let's say 360 cross-strength titanium, also the back, whatever, 
uh, you tell them don't they say because they are after surgery so i would suggest don't go straight away go for 10 repetition or 10 minutes or 10 seconds no no you tell them to try one two one two one two each ever exercise maybe two the thing two seconds first see after that you have to uh, ask them a feedback whether are you okay all right yeah, yeah. so <laughs> progressively because especially in this group of surgery whoever gone through this because at the end they might strengthen the low uh, uh, vertebra again and then all the muscles surrounding the vertebra so that uh, they become strong when they become strong definitely low back pain will be reduced into the minimum way okay yeah and no. hmm. um, again question hmm. uh, is from Nuriyadi Ahmad Nuriyadi he is a former of hockey athlete and now he rarely playing hockey but he feels sometimes he is uh, he got uh, in the lumbar hmm. he got some pain yeah so it is any relation with the hockey that he doing before? Hmm. They ask him about that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I, I can say that uh, I think I read quite a number of uh, research in terms of hockey and eye hockey player in terms of relation to low back pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, the recent one, they found that actually hockey players sometimes uh, they say just just mention about that. They say a uh, previous study mentioned about that the, the hockey player got the pain, but they also don't know where is the pain come from. But they know that low back pain. All right. So yeah. that, that's why I mentioned to you just now because hockey player they bend always bend bend bend. So the question here is they overuse, and when you overuse you didn't strengthen the part especially the muscle the inner muscle Not two maybe either the, the nerve when they become senior the age increase maybe the nerve have been ruptured a little bit by the bone mm -hmm. yeah okay. yeah so the pain maybe i can't answer him 100 percent. where is the pain then i think to answer that i think almost 100 percent I can say that it's due to the hockey banning, overuse, and they don't strengthen the part. So, anyone, any question? Okay, any one again to asking directly to Dr. Lim? Yeah. Uh, Hello. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I'm Natasha. Yeah, Natasha. Um, uh, also from hockey, so it will. I think hockey and roller skate it's a bit similar sport because yeah. we use uh, our padding. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what do you think about roller skate? Is there is them have like same risk with hockey for the low back pain? I just want to know what do you think? Which one? Which one? Roller I skate. Roller skate. Roller skate. Uh, yes. Roller skate are uh, not much of banning compared to hockey. Mm. Uh, they're not much of banning in terms of uh, roller skate. Uh, his, his body is still not a banning like hockey. Like you have to bend your body. Uh, but uh, roller skating is not so a little bit bent, but not so much. Uh, so so far, I think uh, not many study concentrate on that. Uh, most of the uh, currently all the study is hockey. Uh, low back pain, they always link with uh, only the first one is the hockey player, and number two is the ice hockey. Uh, other than that, not so severe, in, not so much in terms of people study on that. Yeah, but you you want to study compare with the roller skate and hockey player uh, by all means, but, uh, because uh, roller skate also you need to bend, but not so much. Okay. Yeah. Two thank answers. you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and this is from. From me. <laughs> no, no. Uh, do you know that woman that will ever pregnant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been happy, right? To yeah. Do a kilo, three kilogram the baby. And yeah. this is usually so many women in the world got low back pain. Yeah. 
yeah, is it effective to them to get this exercise? Uh, I can every month. Yeah, that's uh, what I think. Woman for a mom. <laughs> for mom. <laughs> Maybe for when I was young, uh, when I was young, still like that is, I'm okay. I'm doing anything okay. And yeah. have a massage and someone will massage to me and doing up to me. Maybe the weight is about 100. I'm okay. I'm still okay. Yeah. But now just only my son just massage with the food to me. Yeah. I'm going to accept it. So this is um what do you think about this this is because of already i'm already old <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, i think this is a, a very um practical question yeah it's okay. a very reality in terms of okay, as a yeah. mom as a mom i think uh, uh childbearing the time i think uh when you are pregnant i think uh, the mechanical in terms of your body is actually you you know uh, the bearing itself is actually can lead to low back pain as well because you know the you know the baby is actually giving extra weight all right that is one so that uh, to to actually prevent that actually the most important thing is let's say uh, you are younger then you practice a lot of strengthen in terms of your low back pain so you might reduce the uh, potential of during pregnancy then your low back pain is come become so severe okay? yes. so you you must be uh, prevention means that you train to strengthen the core strength because core also involve the, the you know frontal and the back so that that's one uh, number two uh, because most of the mom most of the mom uh, when the baby give birth and then after that when they one year old two year old and then it's still mom is the one attached to the baby more than Father, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that, so then they want to actually carry the baby more than the father. So again, when you carry the baby, it's actually uh, extra load for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would suggest that uh, for the young lady in this group and all that, uh, it's better to strengthen uh, your lower back muscles so you, to avoid a future uh, sickness like low back pain later on. Uh, I, I think uh, a few studies have been shown that a uh, female got the higher prevalence in terms of getting low back pain, about maybe about 80, 85 percent more than that compared to men. Yeah. So uh, I think this is this is true. So that most of the study also uh, focus on the female, uh, especially mom. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that. Uh, I'll suggest that in this group, uh, if you've got time, just practice this 360 course thing. Uh, or any people say blank, blank, blank. Uh, just do it. Yes. Yes, just do it. You know, as long to strengthen the lower back pain so that you can't see now, but maybe you can see after 10 years. Yes, you're right. I will try. <laughs> yeah. And this is the yeah. last question from Karisma. Yeah. And our time is still just only six minutes after this. Because at twelve we finish. I I can I can hear the question clearly. Okay, the last question is from Karisma Eka Ramadan. He ah. asking about chiropractic. You know chiropractic. Huh? Ah. Um, is it okay doing chiropractic, and what is the effect for the long term effect? Is it okay, chiropractic? What is it? It's like a massage, but you strength, you strength, ah. strength training like that. But he said chiropractic. Oh, chiropractic. Yeah, so that I think um, that is more on rehab side. Mm -hmm. Chiropractic is always all more on rehab. Anything like you already got the injury, and then only you do the rehab. Yeah. But uh, I would say that uh, in this uh, post strength is more on prevention. Yes, prevention. Yeah, prevention before before you got anything happen. So, but a lot of people don't do prevention. It's just leave it as this. When I got pain, only go for rehab. No pain is okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I uh, Therapeutic is more on a uh, rehab side. Yeah. So yeah. I would suggest. Uh, 
uh, definitely this one can be helped a little bit, but uh, in terms of the rehab, can be, but not so much. Because the thing, we don't know what is the cause, maybe because due to the mechanical problem. It's not other problem. Mechanical means like you somehow you need to do an operation to remove certain extra part or, or some defect part or something like that. So uh, core strength is always in the prevention instead of uh, rehab. So I hope that I can answer that. Yeah. So the core strength, hmm. uh, when doing core strength, is after doing dynamic exercise, right? After yep. that, doing static Yes. Exercise. So, course one is like a static exercise like that. Yeah. Got it. Session yang lah, sure. Okay. Okay. So, this is kurang dari lima minit. Uh, so. It's okay. Uh, uh, anybody got any uh, question? Uh, can send it uh, to the WhatsApp to me or even send the email that whichever. Uh, I hope that uh, Doctor Titin will provide them, Ibu Titin will provide them all the my PowerPoint presentation. Correct? Yeah. Ah. So the PowerPoint presentation that actually you can uh, watch the video and all that. And uh, I really want to share uh, this uh, 360 degree core strength titanium to, to everyone. So please use it. But I know uh, when uh, when I do this course thing, a lot of people say, oh, just now when you perform it, you feel that tiring or not tired? And there is uh, some people commented very tired. <laughs> so, yeah, I think for a few movements, I just tired. It's a bit too old for me. <laughs> so uh, another thing I think uh, before you do this course thing, I will suggest to you maybe you do some simple stretching. So I don't want you to sudden again, you got a back pain just because of the, you know, suddenly you do the core strength with like that and then you got the, ah, you, you catch because the, the muscles or the nerve is still inactive. Suddenly you, you press so much up and then they, they might, uh, you know, get injured or a sprain or something like that happen. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if no, uh, just send any question and whatever things to me with the WhatsApp or with the Facebook. Uh, with uh, my Facebook also always there. Yeah. Uh, type my full name, you can find me, and then add me as a friend. I will get because I never been to Samarang yet. Uh, of course, the other place Surabaya, where else? Uh, you just name it. I think Indonesia. I've been gone through so many places, uh, Lake Toba. Danau Toba, everything I I I've been to, uh, even Lombo, I've been there and all that. So that uh, maybe one day I'll visit uh, Samarang Yeah. Okay, okay. So thank you very much. Any, any question? Just send it to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I will help to to them to provide your Facebook or something. If any question, just directly to give them. And uh, Doctor <laughs> Lim, thank you very much. This is very interesting and very excellent presentation and this is helpful for me for mom <laughs> and also for my research later. Yeah. and also from the participant and don't forget our participant can fill the form and you can got certificate directly from dr lim von hoy and thank you very much all participant uh, see you next yeah. time Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And then we are doing Take a good photo. Pak Mus, could you have to to take a picture together? How take a picture? Uh can I how, how to do? Yes. Pak Mus. Pak Mus. Masih ada satu menit. Ya ya ya, tolong dibantu ambilkan foto yang banyak orang. Ini saya nggak bisa oh, yes. fotonya. Benar. Ah. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, so, saya kirim ke WA ibu. Ya ya. So have so many how many slide? Yeah. There are so many pages now. <laughs> have uh, before one sixty, not just the uh, one thirty three. Okay. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, smile. Okay, uh, thank you. Smile. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank